Members and guests, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you today Peter Carey, our guest speaker. Uh, many of you will know his uh, remarkable football career and the contribution he's made to uh, Australian rules football over the years, in including pa playing 448 games for Glenelg between 1971 and 1988. I think it said actually 447 in the bulletin, but um, that was a mistake. He had one extra one. Peter is now at the Chief Executive of Youth Volunteers of South Australia and is here today to talk about youth volunteers, not football, but I'm sure he'd be happy to take one or two questions later, and to tell you about the very important work that youth volunteers are doing for young people in this state. It's my pleasure to introduce Peter Carey. Thanks, Carol. We often hear about the plight of children in Africa and also parts of Asia. And I've witnessed firsthand the conditions children grew up in Papua New Guinea. I'm sure you'd all agree that no child deserves to be brought up in these terrible circumstances. But we do tend to forget and also don't hear much about the plight of many children growing up right here on our doorstep in Adelaide who are brought up in very poor circumstances. Again, we hear very little about the fact uh, that the number of child abuse reports in South Australia was over 19,000 in 2013 and 2014. 2,600 of these children were under the care of the minister. We're not surprised with these numbers at Youth Opportunities. We see examples of this every day. We will graduate around 700 students from our program this year, mainly from low socio-economic areas. 50% are on school cards. 50% are from dysfunctional families. One in four are diagnosed with a mental health problem, and this includes anxiety, depression, learning disabilities, and self-loathing. Then there are those that are bullied and also those that have physical disabilities. And what does this mean? It means that there are thousands of young people growing up in South Australia thinking they are different, feeling unloved, that no one really cares whether they are dead or alive. They feel hopeless, discouraged rather than encouraged to be the best they can be, completely lacking in life skills to succeed. So unless something changes, these people started, these children start a downward spiral of dropping out of school, become unemployed, and they establish new dysfunctional families when there are two or three more kids who grow up in uh, dis disadvantaged circumstances. This is the never ending cycle unless something is done to break this cycle. At a recent Youth Opportunities graduation I attended, one of the students who spoke came from a family where his mother was a drug addict in and out of mental institutions and his father was in jail for most of the student's life. The courage this student displayed in telling his story gave me the feeling with the right chances in life he could become a real leader and without that chance who knows where he could end up. So what does Youth Opportunities do? It gives a chance to young people, a chance to succeed in life despite their circumstances. Most of these young people we get involved with come from difficult circumstances. But if we can, we try and take a few that are doing okay at school but have the leadership potential to lead a change of culture in the group and then the school. Over a 10 week period of one day per week in groups of 18, we give these students the tools to succeed. They learn how to set goals, how to achieve them, how to gain the cooperation of teachers, how to make friends, how to stop bullies, and most importantly, believe in themselves. They learn how they can be happy and successful despite their situation. They learn to send stars. Sending stars is when we speak in a positive manner to someone and we all love someone saying something good about us. 
We also keep in contact with all our students for a period of two years after completing the program. Our success. Results from our own internal measures show that we achieve increased retention with 97% of our personal leadership program participants positively engaged in education or, or employment two years after graduating from the program. Also, we improve personal relationships and communication. 100% of gra uh, graduates report they have skills to deal with bullying on completion of the personal leadership program. They also have a, a increased, increased ability with day-to-day -day challenges and also increased motivation to increase their goals. The Youth Opportunities Personal Leadership Program provides a measurable impact on the wider community with the positive changes that occur in these young people, helping them to establish a more confident future, thereby placing less strain on our state's social services. As measured by Social Ventures Australia, for every dollar invested in the program, $7.99 is created in value to the community. The Department of Education and the University of Adelaide have also conducted surveys on our program, and they've all indicated massive changes in the wellbeing of our graduates. I still find it hard to believe that we don't get better support from all South Australians to put more students through our program. We're only limited to the number of students we put through the program but by the amount of money that we can raise. I became involved in Youth Opportunities because I truly believe we can make a difference to the young lives of, South, of young South Australians and in doing so influence the culture in schools and then ultimately the whole community. When you know you can make such a big difference you just keep asking for more help to achieve this goal. I'd now like to share some feedback from schools that uh, support our program. Firstly from Seaford Secondary College. Throughout our participation we have noticed significant improvements in our senior students, with over 600 students now having been part of the program since its inception. Current results show that the student morale has increased and students are more engaged in learning and we have substantially higher retention rates and greater participation in higher education. From the Eastern Fleurieu School, which is at Strathalban. Our school prides itself on assisting young people to grow and achieve success, and the Personal Leadership Program gives young people the attitude required to do this. Our long-standing relationship with Youth Opportunities has seen the school culture shift to one where positive attitudes are seen as the norm. Over this period, some families have had more than one child participate, which in turn has a positive impact on home life and family relationships. Our students come from a, a variety of backgrounds, however they experience, experience challenging challenges along similar themes. Some students lack motivation, confidence or skills to communicate effectively. Others struggle with self-awareness and managing their emotions. Without exception, students who graduate from the Personal Leadership Program increase their ability to deal with these challenges and manage their responses to negative experiences. The program delivers valuable improvements for our students, positively impacting classrooms, friendship groups, families and the wider community. So another one from a small school at Karunda. What makes this program so special, special from a school point of view is how our school community improves. Students walk out of youth opportunities with increased confidence, sound conflict resolution skills and a sense of togetherness that will stay with them throughout their high school journey. Our school has partnered, this is Craigmore High School, our school has partnered with Youth Opportunities since mid-2003 and has seen the success of the program impacting our school culture and the lives of students who participate. The program run by Youth Opportunities offers the opportunity for our young people to train, support and mentor each other in positive behaviours, creating and encouraging an environment where students feel safe and supported. We fully support the Youth Opportunities Program and look forward to continuing to, our, to support a program that positively changes our school, our students and our community. I had the opportunity late last year to spend some time at Craigmore High School with the principal. This is probably one of the toughest schools in terms of demographics in South Australia. And I was amazed at the feeling I received from walking around the school. 
The students appeared motivated. The teachers clearly enjoyed working there. And I think this is an indication of the program's ability to inf influence the culture of a school. Supporting this program helps young people to get a chance in life. I'm sure we all believe that every child deserves a chance to succeed. I firmly believe that this program can change the lives of young people, significantly change the culture of the school over time, which will in time improve the community we live in. I'll just finish up showing you a short video of some graduates talking about our Youth Opportunities Program.
Thank you, Peter. I think everyone will agree that was very impressive and it's a very, very worthwhile uh, organisation. So um, I'd also take pleasure in presenting uh, on behalf of the Rotary Club of Adelaide a cheque for $1,000 uh, to Peter for youth opportunities. To, this will support one student in the leadership program for a year and it's really great to hear that that $1,000 uh, will multiply to, to be really worth 10, 000, nearly $10,000 within the community as a, a value added to the community. So that makes us even better. And so thank you, Peter, for that. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Peter said he was happy to take questions. Uh, before we do that, though, I'd like the members of the Community Activities Committee to stand up, please. There are various, everyone's here except Glenn who ended up back there. Sorry, Glenn. <laughs> and I just also wanted to thank the Community Activities Committee that I chair for recommending youth opportunities for this uh, donation. So thank you, folks. Thank you. Oh, are you happy for questions? Absolutely. Yeah. So any questions? I'll take the president first. <laughs> Uh, very good question, uh, and it's all sorts of circumstances. Um, uh, some of them come from dysfunctional parents. Um, you know, as, I, as I said, at, uh, at our graduations, and um, certainly uh, if anyone's interested to come to one of our graduations, uh, please, um, I'll leave some cards here so you just need to get in contact with me. But you see these kids come from... Uh, they can be outcasts in society. They, you, you know when they start the program they haven't got a friend in school and they get into this group of 18 kids and the group takes them on board and they become accepted by the group. So they've actually probably the first time in their life has been, they've been accepted by a group of people. So you get those sorts of kids. You get kids that, you know, I spoke about the, the, the boy that got up that's mother is a drug addict fathers in, in jail. So you get a lot of circumstances where they, they become, uh, they believe that they're a victim of their circumstances. And I, I guess what our program's trying to do is to change that attitude and take control of their own life and give them the skills to succeed in life. And, uh, you know, I was lucky enough, or you might say I was unlucky to grow up in the Glenelg area. Um, but it's a pretty good life down there. Uh, and I don't know how many of you travel out around Elizabeth, um, but you see some horrific circumstances of kids growing up there. And you can only think uh, about what life, life is like for them. So these kids, given a chance, are great kids. You know, they didn't choose their parents. And what we're trying to do is give these kids, from all sorts of circumstances, the opportunity to succeed. That's wrong. So we do a, an information session. If we were going to run a program early next year, uh, at, towards the end of the year, year nine year, uh, we have an info session. We invite all the kids to come along. We make a presentation of, of what the program's uh, about and invite them to apply for the program. We'll only take kids on that want to make a, a difference in their life. We're not going to take kids on that don't want to make a change. So then we have an interview process when they indicate that they would like to do the program. We interview the kids and we make a decision on the 18 kids that we want to uh, take forward in that program. Get the support we 
Um, certainly we've had some support from sporting organisations. Uh, the Crows Foundation uh, supported us uh, for two or three years and, and now have moved on to another worthy cause. Uh, I've had discussions with the Port Adelaide Footy Club that do a wonderful job with their youth programs and certainly in some of the disadvantaged communities. So I've, I've had meetings with uh, Russell, Russell Ebert and uh, some other people from the Port Power Footy Club. And, and we're working with them to come up with how we can actually um, combine programs. You know, we think it would be ideal. They run a, a program where they grab uh, kids with leadership qualities, they bring them down to Albert and take them around the clubs, give them some career counselling. Uh, and we'd like uh, to look at the opportunity of getting the kids that have done our program to actually participate in that as well. So we're working through that. Um, so there are sporting clubs that are interested in what we do. You know, we have support from the SANFL, support from the SMA here, you know, donated um, an auction prize to, uh, that we uh, auctioned off at uh, a recent golf day. So yeah, there, there is a, a lot of people that do want to support us. We've got an operating cost of about $1.4 a year. We get about 300000 from schools that pay for the, uh, our program. Uh, we get little or no government funding and um, working on that with the uh, CEO from uh, Department of Education and Child Development at the moment and hoping that uh, we can get some money from the government. But we rely heavily on foundations, people like Rotary Clubs and we've had fantastic support from Rotary Clubs for many years which, which is outstanding. Uh, we've got some very generous individual donors, uh, we've got some generous corporate people as well. But, uh, you know, at the start of the year and I thought um, after working for 30 years with Coca-Cola and some of those years with Brian Isselbach, uh, I thought this would be a walk in the park but it hasn't been. So every year we start off we've got to raise uh, 1.1 million from somewhere and um, the guaranteed money for us at the beginning of the year is very small. So we're actively um, phoning people, meeting people to encourage them to donate. And I can't believe the number of mates that don't answer my phone calls now because they know I'm going to be asking for something. Thank you, Peter. Any further questions? Dave. Oh. Can you just explain how the program works? You, do you just provide the information to the schools and they run it themselves, or do you provide a facilitator to make it all happen? Excellent question. Uh, we've got a training team at Youth Ops. We've got uh, eight people that work in our training team and we uh, provide two trainers. Um, the school has to uh, want to run our program so we have a discussion with the school, they make their contribution towards the program. We find uh, a site off campus, uh, we supply two trainers and all the program materials as part of the program. So, uh, you know, as I said, it's done as a selection of the kids that want to do the program. We select the kids, take them off campus once a week for six hours a day for 10 weeks. So we have 60 hours of contact with two trainers and that's very much one trainer will have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations with the student and then the other trainer will be taking the facilitated program. So we find, um, and I guess the secret to the program is understanding what issues the kids are dealing with. Uh, and um, they're in a very safe environment with these experienced trainers and the information that they give to those trainers uh, is very graphic at times and, and, and uh, terrible, you know, coming from terrible circumstances, some of the stories are pretty bad. But what they need to do is identify what their issues are before we feel that we can work with them and, and get them out of that. So. Um, uh, and as I said, the graduations, uh, at the end of 10 weeks, uh, all the kids uh, get up and present their story. So they talk about life before youth opportunities and the circumstances they've grown up in, what, their uh, what the program has taught them over the 10 weeks, and talk about what their goals are for the future. And um, if you can get along, they're a real tearjerker because uh, you see some of these kids that have come from really desperate s situation talk about life in such a positive manner, which is... Absolutely moving. Rob. Nick, 
Uh, there's, there's a hell of a lot of theories out there what's the best age to start with your kids and I don't think there's any right answer. Um, you know, some people think that um, uh, certainly the thought patterns are established by three years old. Some argue that you've got to get kids before seven and eight. Um, I guess why we think our program uh, attacks the right age, we think kids that are 15 or 16 have got that level of maturity to actually make decisions about their own life. Now, I don't think they can do it at three and I don't think they can do it at eight, but I really believe that we can still save kids at 15 and 16 when they've got that maturity to start making decisions for themselves. So that's why we picked that age. And we have run uh, year nine programs, we've run year eight programs. The best success we've had is with 15 and 16 year old kids. Are there any further questions? Oh, thanks. Tom. Go, Tom. That's a really tough one. And, uh, and there are organisations that are helping. Uh, we've been working with SAMRI uh, in the, the Wealth and uh, Resilience Unit, Wellbeing and Resilience Unit in SAMRI. And they're currently um, uh, embarking on a program and um, there's two foundations, the White Foundation and the James and Diana Ramsey Foundation that have contributed over a million dollars they're going to try and get 850 of these kids that may be not motivated to do our program and try and see if they can help those kids. Uh, it's a really, t I think every kid we want to give a chance, but if that kid hasn't you know, got the attitude to want to change their circumstances, not saying we take perfect kids all the time, because we certainly don't, and, and we'll take a punt on some kids, as long as they're demonstrating that they don't like their circumstances and they actually want to do something with them. But it's very hard to deal with kids unless they make that decision. Something where I've got a meeting next week at uh, Mark Oliphant High School, uh, and we, the Operation Flinders uh, program tends to work with uh, pretty tough kids. They take them away for 10 days and uh, put them through uh, the Flinders Ranges in pretty uh, tough circumstances. Uh, and we've had a chat with Youth Opportunities what we, uh, with um, Operation Flinders. What we want to do is grab these kids when they finish the program, put them through the Youth Opportunities program and then keep in contact with them for two years. While they're in that positive frame of mind when they come back from a program like Operation Flinders, we believe that doing our program those kids might be really beneficial. So that will be dealing with some tougher kids. run out of time for questions, so uh, I'd like to thank Peter once again and present you with a copy oh, keep dropping my pen, so leave there, of uh, humanitarian projects that have been conducted in, the ro in Rotary, so some examples of that which you might be interested Fantastic. in. Thank you very much and could everyone Thanks, Carol. Yeah. stand and